How often should your CML be monitored through blood tests, PCRs, and bone marrow aspirations? And when should you have extra monitoring done? Stay tuned and find out. Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm Steven. In 2011, I was diagnosed with CML at the chronic phase. In the last 10 years, I've had many tests done to monitor my CML. This video will talk about specific guidelines that the National Comprehensive Cancer Network suggests, as well as my own experience. The National Comprehensive Cancer Network, NCCN, publishes specific guidelines about how often CML survivors are supposed to be tested. The NCCN includes dozens of CML experts from around the country. And the guidelines that we're discussing today are for the chronic phase of CML. The PCR test is the main way to monitor CML. This is done with a blood test at diagnosis and every three months thereafter. Once PCR is less than 1%, Continue to have a PCR every three months for, for two years, and then every three to six months after that. In addition, a bone marrow aspiration and or biopsy is done at diagnosis, and if you don't reach specific milestones or lose response during treatment. Steven was on a clinical trial for his drug to Cigna, his TKI, and he had to get monitored more frequently this was to gather data on his reaction to the drug for the clinical trial. I had weekly blood tests for the first month and then monthly blood tests for the first year. Every three months, I had to have a bone marrow aspiration performed and a PCR test. For year two, I had PCRs every three months and bone marrow aspirations every six months. For years three and four, my PCRs continued to be at every three months, but I no longer needed a bone marrow. Woohoo! <laughs> For years five and beyond, I only needed PCRs every six months. Generally, I saw my oncologist every time I got a PCR test to review the results. Except for the bone marrows, Steven's schedule pretty much matched the guidelines. He ultimately had seven bone marrows because he was on the clinical trial, whereas the current guidelines, there's only one bone marrow at diagnosis. If you change a drug, you'll most likely have to get tested more frequently through blood work to see if there are any serious side effects of the new drug. There are other situations where you may need additional monitoring. Some of these include if you're monitoring side effects, if you're changing your dose, or if you stop your drugs for a little bit and your doctor may want to see how your body reacts to when you go back on the drug. There were two separate situations where I had extra monitoring. The first time was about three years into treatment where my bilirubin continued to be elevated. Steven's doctor had him stop the drug for about a week. He then got another blood test, but no PCR, to confirm that his bilirubin had come down. When I restarted the drug, I reduced my dose in half from 800 milligrams a day to 400 milligrams a day. The second time Steven got extra monitoring was when he went from 300 milligrams a day down to 150 milligrams a day. He still had the standard PCR tests every six months, but at the three month mark, the nurse included a separate lab test, but no PCR, to confirm that his bilirubin had come down. If you're in treatment-free remission, the NCCN recommends regular testing, starting out once a month. It also says survivors should be prepared to be monitored more often than when they were on their TKIs. To stay off your drugs, your PCR would need to be less than 0.1%, which is major molecular response or MMR. For the first year in cessation, I had to get blood tests and PCRs done roughly every two months. So my doctor wasn't strictly following the NCC guidelines, but we trust him. He has over 40 years of experience in treating leukemia. In Stephen's second year of cessation, he started getting labs every three months. His doctor might change this to every four months soon, which is, which is exciting. As a reminder, this is what you need to be eligible for treatment-free remission, or TFR. You need to be in the chronic phase, have taken a TKI for at least three years, and had a PCR of less than or equal to 0.01% for two years or more. This has to be done on at least four tests, each done at least three months apart. So from your, and in your experience, you were on the TKI for at least 
eight and a half years. Yes, yeah, so the guidelines is at least three years. I was on it for eight and a half. And additionally, the guidelines for being less than 0.1% was for two years, and I was at that for almost five years. I've been in treatment for remission for 18 months since the end of 2019. <laughs> Everyone's different in how they are monitored. Even though there's the NCCN guidelines, we imagine a lot depends on access to testing, your relationship with your doctor, and your insurance. There's a lot of factors that can impact how often CML survivors are monitored. So, for example, when the pandemic started in 2020, Stephen's nurse told him to skip his March tests. He was supposed to get tested every two months at that point because he had just stopped taking his drugs five months before that. So he went four months between his tests. I was a little nervous, but I just reminded myself that CML is a slow moving disease in general. There's not as high a risk of the disease spreading rapidly, especially those in the chronic phase. I have a good relationship with my nurse and I really trust her. We're here to support each other and learn from each other. We're all part of Team Heal and we want to hear from you. Our question of the day is, how often are you monitored for CML? Comment with your answers below and we'll write back. Hit the subscribe button to get more videos about CML and healthy living for CML survivors. We're here to coach cancer survivors and caregivers on how to live healthy lives, and we want you to be part of our team of healing. We're Amy and Stephen from the Heal Every Day Together channel. Check out the links below to our website and to find out more about the information in this video. Thank you for joining us today. Together, Together we, we heal. heal.